Hi everybody, well, welcome back. We're gonna do a quick video here on how to properly apply a fiberglass uh, thumb spica cast uh, using materials. We are gonna be using stockinette, fiberglass, and cotton padding. We're gonna jump right into it, and uh, here we go. So the first thing you need to do is you're gonna place the stockinette on the arm. You're gonna slide all the fingers, including the thumb in. Eventually, we're gonna focus on the thumb later on in the video. For right now, just focus on keeping her wrist nice and straight, fingers nice and straight, make a, make a little hole so that her thumb can come out of here at the base of the thumb, like we did in the previous video with the short arm cast. Slide your thumb out nice and gentle because remember the thumb is injured. Then we're gonna take the thumb cover, we're gonna fold it about a third of the way down, and we're gonna cut the corner off, again, like we did with the short arm cast. But this one, the thumb sleeve is a little bit longer because in this particular case, the surgeon has asked for the thumb to be included in the thumb spica cast all the way to the, to the tip of the IP, the interphalangeal point. So that is the beginning, that's the sleeve. And next we're gonna go ahead and do the cotton. Next we're gonna go ahead and apply the cotton, which again, you've seen in previous videos. We lay the cotton on very comfortably. We do not pull it too tightly because it will shear and break. And not only that, uh, you don't want it to be too tight on the patient. You want it to fit snug and comfortable so that the patient feels secure, but you do not want the patient to feel like we're restricting blood flow or being uh, constrictive with the cotton padding. You lay the cotton on halfway over every turn so that it's nice and uniform. Textbook says you should have one to two layers of padding throughout the cast. Stop three to two to three fingers from the antecubical bend because she's pediatrics, I'll go ahead and add a little extra on the edges so that it doesn't rub on her as she's being active. And forgive the, forgive the ding there. And then we're gonna also incorporate the thumb as well. A nice trick for the smaller thumbs, you take your patty and you split it in half and you go ahead and wrap the thumb like so. And that way it's not too bulky when you go to put the cast on. Lay it on nice and comfortable and kind of get a little creative when it comes to the creases and just kind of shear as need be. Just like that. Kind of get in there. And the black stocking net is good for demonstration purposes because you can see where the cotton is thin and where you need to reinforce. So you'll see a couple little thin spots there. We're going to reinforce with our little scraps we have left. And then we're going to proceed on to the fiberglass cast. We're gonna go ahead and start with the fiberglass. The underneath layer, of course, is the initial portion of the cast. You wanna make that first cut in the, in the same angle as the thumb. Come on through. And unlike, unlike the short arm cast where we folded that in, we're gonna leave the flaps out. And the reason we're gonna leave the flaps out is because it's gonna act like reinforcement on the base of the thumb. You're gonna cut a line parallel to the thumb. You're going to come through nice and gentle and you're going to do that once or twice depending on the size of the patient the size of the thumb of course if it's a really really small child you only really need to do it one time but as they get older teenagers and adult size you can probably go through it twice and especially the boys football players and girls in volleyball and real athletic teens you want to reinforce it at least twice just to have a nice sturdy cast so i did the same cut when i that i started with i finished with so first cut Wrap twice around the thumb, second cut, leave the, leave the little corners exposed like that. Can you tilt your wrist just a little bit like that? Like this, straight, there you go. And we'll go ahead and finish up with the first layer. And we'll be almost done. And I will stop right there. You can, just like we did with the previous videos, you can see that we don't lay it on tightly at all. We just lay it on there comfortably. It doesn't have to be pulled tight. So then we'll do the same exact thing we do with the white layer. We'll do with the black layer. And I'll show you, everything's gonna be repetitive. This is of course, the second layer is for reinforcing and of course, color of choice by the patient. So that it's, I guess, somewhat, somewhat decorative. Come around the thumb and open open. And what we'll do is we'll do that little split and we'll make it look nice and neat. 
you notice that I folded over the cotton, the stocking at the edges, I folded it over so that you'll have nice soft bumpers on all the edges. And then, just like we did with the white layer, we will come through one last time in between the thumb and the index finger just to lock everything down. And we'll fold it out so it looks nice and neat. And then we'll finish it up and work our way down the arm. This is almost the end of a thumb spica fiberglass cast. The only thing I will do here shortly when I finish it is the last pass that I make, I will make sure as I work my way back up the arm that my last few turns are nice and wide so it looks nice and professional. And of course, so if she wants her friends to sign it, there's plenty of room there for people to sign. And stay right there for one sec, try not to touch it. The black dye, of course, comes off. So then you get some lotion or some soap or some sanitizer or some surgy lube. And you just kind of massage it in there to seal down that end piece to get rid of that tacky, resiny, uh, sticky adhesive you, that you get on your gloves. It makes them all sticky. And you kind of do your final shaping. And that is your nice thumb spica, soft edges so she can use her hand to do things. You put a little crease in here, the natural crease that exists in the palm of the hand, so she can still use her hand to grab things. And a nice little natural little bend where the wrist would be. And that is your thumb spica 